This is Nick with LogosByNick.com, and in today's tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can create this vector impossible heart graphic using Inkscape. And at any point in this tutorial, you could look down at the bottom left-hand side of my screen to see which mouse clicks and keystrokes I'm using. So I'll minimize this, and we'll get started here in Inkscape. By the way, if you'd like to know how you can make Inkscape appear dark and with these custom icons, a link to that information will be in the description of the video. So the first thing we want to do is make sure we have the view set to custom. And then we'll zoom in at one to one. And then we'll open up the uh, align and distribute menu with this button over here. And we're going to want last selected chosen from that drop down. And then we'll open up the edit objects, colors, gradients, and stroke menu with that button right there. So, what we're going to create first is a rectangle. So, we're, we'll grab the uh, squares and rectangles tool and click and drag to create a rectangle like that. And then we'll go to the select tool. And uh, we're going to go up here where it says W, which is width. And we're going to change that to 800. And hit enter. And then change this one to 200. Hit enter. So we have a 200, an 800 by 200 pixel uh, rectangle. And I'm going to take the opacity of that and bring that down about in half. And I'll come back to the uh, squares and rectangles tool. And I'm going to take this top uh, node here, the top right corner, and just click and drag that down to give this rounded, um, rounded edges like that. And then we'll come over to the Stroke Paint tool. We'll click the blue button to turn that on. And I'm going to come over here and just click on this little X in the bottom left to take away the fill color. And we'll come over to the Stroke Style tab and make sure the width of the stroke is 75 pixels like I have it set here. If it's not for you, you just erase that and type in 75. And I'm just going to set that to a rounded join and a rounded cap. And then I'm going to convert that to a path by going to Path stroke to path. And what I'll do now is I'm going to create another rectangle going over this part right here. Just click and drag to create another rectangle going through here like that. And I'm going to click this little icon up here that says make corner sharp to give that sharp corners. And I'm going to make that red. And I'm going to get rid of that black outline by coming to the stroke paint tab and clicking on the X. And what we could do now is come back to the select tool and I'm going to right click that and go to duplicate and I'm going to put this duplicated copy down here so that it's going over this bottom portion of the original uh, rectangle and what I'll do now is I'll hold shift and click on the other red rectangles so we have them both selected and go to path union and then hold shift and click on the uh, black rectangle beneath it and go to path difference so that we end up with a shape like this kind of like a cane or a candy cane so what we'll do now is we'll come up here and turn on the snap to cusp nodes and then we'll turn on the snap to smooth nodes as well and I'm going to take this shape and right click that and go to duplicate and I'll turn that red and I'll just click and drag this up here and snap those corners together so it's sitting like that and I'll take the black shape right click that go to duplicate hold shift click the red shape and go to path difference and then I'll take the black shape I'm going to duplicate that. Instead of right clicking it, I'm just going to use the keyboard shortcut, which is Control D. Hit Control D to duplicate it. I'm going to click this button that says Rotate Selection 90 degrees clockwise so that it's sitting upright like that. Then I'm going to flip it horizontally by clicking the button that says Flip Selected Objects Horizontally. And then I'm going to duplicate that again. By the way, to move the page around like this, I'm just pressing down on the mouse wheel and moving the mouse. You should also have scroll scroll arrows here, but uh, I like to use the mouse wheel. It's um, a lot easier. So we're going to duplicate this again, hit Control D, make that copy red, and just snap these two corners together right there like that. And then we'll click the black object, we'll duplicate that again, Control D, hold Shift, click on the red object, and go to Path, Difference. And what we could do now is hold shift and click on the black objects so we have them both selected. And we want to group them together temporarily, just like that. And then we want to click on it a second time to get the rotation handles. And I'm going to hold control and grab this top left handle and rotate it two steps to the left or counterclockwise. So we'll go one, two, like that. And what we want to do now is take these two where, where the black and the red corners are meeting. We want to take those and snap them onto where they are, these are meeting right here. So we'll just grab this, snap that onto there like that, and now we can ungroup that and click off of it to deselect everything. So what we're going to do now is take this red object right here. We're going to duplicate that by hitting Control D. 
and then hold shift and click on this black object up here and go to path difference and then path break apart and what we could do now is hold shift and click on that black object right there to deselect it so we just have this piece and this piece selected and then press uh, delete on the keyboard to get rid of that and what we could do now is we're going to click on this red object and hold shift click on this red object so we have the two red objects selected we'll duplicate them by hitting control D and we'll go to path intersection and I'm just going to turn that green so you can see it better on the video screen and once we've done that we can go to path break apart and then hold shift and click on this little diamond shape down here to the bottom right to deselect it so we just have this little piece selected and then we can press delete on the keyboard because we don't need that so what we'll do now is I'm going to take this green diamond shape I'm going to hit control D to duplicate that hold shift click on this red object up here and go to path difference and then path break apart and then I want to hold shift and click on that red piece to deselect it and then click on that red part to deselect that as well so we just have this one selected and then we can press delete on the keyboard to get rid of that and now what we'll do we'll take this green object hit control D to duplicate it hold shift click on this red object over here path difference path break apart and then we can click off of it to deselect everything and then just take this little red piece over here and just press delete on the keyboard to get rid of that and we're gonna duplicate this green object yet again we'll hit control D I'm gonna flip that vertically by clicking the button that says flip selected objects vertically and I'm gonna take this corner up here and snap it to this corner down there so I'm just gonna snap it down there like that as you can see that's pretty good and I'll duplicate that again, hit control D, and hold shift, click on this black shape down here, and go to path, difference, and then path, break apart, and then hold shift and click on this black object to deselect it, so we just have that piece selected, and then press delete on the keyboard to get rid of it. And then we'll take this green object down here, we'll duplicate it again, hit control D, and I'm going to take that, and I'm going to take this top left corner and snap it into these corners over here. Just like that. And what we could do now is hold shift and click on the black object and then click on the bottom green object down here and unify them all together by going to path, union. And then we can click on all of the red shapes, click this, click this one up here first and then hold shift, click that red shape and then that one and then that one and then the green shape as well and unify them all together by going to path, Union, and we almost have the shape set, but we just have to close in this area right here. So we'll grab the Bezier pen, which is uh, over here in your tool toolbar, or just press B on the keyboard to grab that. I'm going to snap the cursor onto this point, and then click, snap it onto that point, and then to that point, and then back to the starting point. So we've drawn a little shape in there. We'll go to the Select tool, hold Shift, click on the red object, and go to Path Union. And what we could do now is we could turn off the snap to smooth nodes and the snap to cusp nodes. And actually, you know what? Let's turn those back on. I forgot a step. We have to close up these areas right here. So let's go back to the Bezier pen or just press B on the keyboard. Snap the cursor onto this, onto this node right here. And then snap over here. And then finish the shape going through the graphic like that. And we're going to do the same thing up here. We have to close in those curved areas draw a shape just like that. Because if you notice here in my thumbnail, it's flat on the top like that. I don't have it um, like the curves sticking out like that. So uh, we'll go back to the select tool now. Hold shift, click on the red object, go to path union, and then hold shift, click on the uh, other shape that we drew over here, go to path union, and those extra shapes sticking into the black area, we can just click on the black shape we could actually click on this black shape right here and then hold shift and click the other black shape. We're going to want to unify them together. So we'll go to path, union, and then we'll duplicate them by hitting control D. And then hold shift and click on the red object and go to path, difference. And finally, we can click and drag over this entire thing, bring the opacity all the way up. Now we can turn off the snap to smooth nodes and the snap to cusp nodes. 
And I'm going to click on this again to get the rotation handles. And I'm going to hold control and take one of the corner arrows and move it clockwise or to the right. One, two, three, four. Four steps like that. And I'll just click on it again to get back to the scaling handle so I can scale this down a little bit. I'll hold control and shift to scale that down. Click off of it to deselect everything. We could take the black object and make that like a dark red. And we could take the red object and just leave that a, uh, a simple shade of red like that. Or if you want, you can do what I did here in the thumbnail. I just used gradients. To do that, you can just click on the dark red shape. Go to the fill tab. Click on the uh, linear gradient button. Press G on the keyboard to get the gradient tool. Click on this node to the right. Bring the opacity up. And under the fill tab and excuse me, under the HSL tab, I'm going to take the L row and slide that to the right a little bit. And I'll take this node and put this up here towards the top. I'll take this node, put this towards the bottom. And I'll just hold control to lock it onto the vertical axis like that. And then we can take this red object over here and do the same thing. Give that a linear gradient. Click this node, bring the opacity up, slide the L row to the right a little bit. Take this node, put it towards the top and this node towards the bottom. And again, holding down control to lock onto the vertical axis like that. And we can go back to the select tool, click off of it to deselect everything. And that is pretty much it. We have created our heart graphic using Inkscape. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thank you for watching.